Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss one of the less commonly talked about anterior abdominal wall muscles, and that's the muscle called pyramidalis. Now, uh, when we think of anterior abdominal wall muscles, what comes to mind? Well, there's four of them. We have the rectus abdominis, which is the medial one. You can see that right here. And then we've got the three lateral ones. And from superficial to deep, they are external abdominal oblique, internal abdominal oblique, and then the transversus abdominis. And there's a fifth one. It's a lot smaller. And the major reason we talk about it is not its size. It's because it's a highly variable muscle, uh, probably due to genetic factors and genetic differences. Okay, now first of all, let's identify the muscle and then we'll talk about how it's variable. So here's the pyramidalis muscle. Okay, of course, this is just one of them. Um, you can see that it's very small, it's pyramid shaped. Um, the origin is actually gonna be down here on the pubis. Okay, and then the fibers are gonna run superiorly and it's gonna insert on the linea alba. Okay, um, so this of course would be the patient's left pyramidalis muscle. Innervation to this muscle is from the subcostal nerve, which of course originates from the T12 root. And the action of it is to tense the linea alba. Now if we go through this according to insertion is pulled toward the origin, how it is in most muscles, that means that the, the tension would be pulling this downward toward the pubis. Okay, So that means the linea alba is going to be pulled downward, and that's going to function to tense the linea alba, make it tighter, uh, make it more taut. right? And a lot of these other muscles do that already. Transversus abdominis, external oblique, internal oblique, they all tense the linea alba. Okay, So that's not a unique function to this, and to be honest, this probably provides only a minimal uh, contribution relative to those other muscles, but that's its action, to tense the linea alba. It's blood supply, superior and inferior epigastric arteries and veins, although I believe uh, the major blood supply is going to be the inferior epigastric artery. Okay, And then in terms of its relative orientation, it's actually going to lie anterior or superficial to the rectus abdominis. So it's actually not behind it, um, it's actually in front of it. Okay, So it lies in front of the rectus abdominis muscle. Now, as to why it's a variable muscle, what does that mean? Okay. Well, most muscles are not variable, okay? I think I speak for all humans that don't have a lost limb or who don't have some horrible genetic mutation. Uh, we all have biceps brachii, okay? We all have a rectus abdominis. We all have a rectus femoris. We all have latissimus dorsi. Now, there might be minor variations in those muscles, but we all have them. Um, unless, God forbid, someone has a lost limb for some reason, or a horrible genetic deformity that's not specific to that muscle. Okay, the pyramidalis is a is a highly variable muscle because it's only present in eighty percent of the human population. So twenty percent of the viewers watching this don't even have this muscle. Okay, and it gets even more complicated than that. It may be absent on one side. Okay, so some people may actually only have a left pyramidalis and lack the right. Or vice versa, some people might actually have a right pyramidalis and lack the left. And in cases where uh, the pyramidalis is absent, um, this region down here of the rectus abdominis is actually going to be a little bit larger to compensate for the lack of the pyramidalis muscle. Okay, So it's not like if you're lacking this muscle, you just you lose a little bit of strength. No, you don't lose the strength uh, because the rectus abdominis is going to enlarge in this area to compensate for its absence. Sometimes the pyramidalis can be double on one side. So you could have one situation where you have none on the right and two of these on the left. Um, sometimes you can have pairs that are unequal in size. Okay? So maybe the left pyramidalis muscle is much larger than the right. And also the height, the, the degree to which this muscle ascends upwards and where it inserts on the linea alba is also variable. Okay? Um, and, of course, the major thing we're talking about with its variability is, honestly, whether or not people have it in the first place, and sometimes they can have one on one side and not one on the other. Okay, But this is typically what we refer to as the fifth anterior abdominal wall muscle. It's, of course, the smallest, and 
originates at the pubis, inserts in the linea alba, and when it contracts, pulls that insertion down toward the pubis, and so it's going to be tensing that linea alba, making it more taut. Okay, so hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of this muscle, where it is, what it does. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.